from the sea, depending on what I managed to catch out here. And then I'm going to prepare a sea mussel soup with tomatoes and rosemary and grilled corn-fed chicken. Men det här är inte en säsong för all. Nej. Magnus, he just told me that I'm lucky that we, we caught eel because early summer is way off the season. But during fall, millions of eels pass through these waters. Can I try to grab one? No. Looks like snakes. Yes, it looks good. You can prepare eel in numerous ways. I like the eel soup, the ordinary smoked one, and the eel that is smoked over juniper fire. That's very good. Here I am in this old smokehouse, and these are the guys who took care of my eels. Now, follow me, because there's something I want to show you. Hi, Amy. Watch. My eels. <laughs> My eyes. Hur långt det tar? The eel is a very fatty fish and that's why it takes such a long time to smoke. Jimmy told me around six, seven hours. That's a long time. Can I taste one? Still very hot. This is delicious. And this is the, the eel, the smoked eel that I'm going to use for my two first dishes. Okay, thank you. Thank Hi, hi. I found this very quiet, nice garden and take a quick look at this building behind me. This is a half-timbered building, and these type of houses were introduced to us Swedes from the Danes. You know, Skåne was once under Danish control, and that's why we have this weird accent, and actually people from the northern part of Sweden, they can sometimes say like, oh, you know, the people in Skåne, they talk like they have a potato in their mouth. So now I'm going to prepare my first dish, and that is smoked eel with scrambled eggs. Some milk. And I season it just with salt and pepper. Just whisk the egg and milk together. We put some butter in my saucepan. Taste it. More salt. 
and pepper. So my butter is melting and that's perfect. Now I'm just going to pour in my beaten egg and milk. And you have to stir it constantly, otherwise the eggs will stick to the bottom. And now to my smoked eel. I'm going to cut some nice pieces from the eel. It's a delicious fish, but it's not so diet friendly. That's a pity, but you have to try it because it's very good. Chives. To my scrambled eggs and eel, I'm going to use a dark bread. You can use whatever you want at home, but it's very tasty if you have dark bread like this. This is so easy to make. My scrambled eggs on the dark bread. It's very windy. The eel. So, here we are. We have some smoked eel. And under the eel, we have the scrambled eggs with a lot of finely chopped chives. And that's about it. Very nice and very easy. There we go. And now to my second course, and that is with the cucumber, spring onion, and we're going to season it with lemon juice and salt and pepper. I put my smoked eel in a big bowl, peel my cucumber, and then we're going to remove the core. The core has a lot of water in it, and I, I just want the, the flesh. And when you remove the core, you just do like this. Watch. We cut the cucumber. I think that is enough. Cucumber into the bowl with the eel. And now, my spring onion. This is one of my favorite vegetables, actually. I like it because it isn't, it's very uh, sweet. The taste is very sweet and it isn't so strong. And also, uh, it has a beautiful color. You can mix it into almost everything. We slice it finely. And of course, it's very important that you have a sharp knife. And if you don't, buy one. And now my horseradish. I like spicy food, so I'm going to use a lot of horseradish. But if you're a little bit sensitive, don't use too much. This is rapeseed oil. It's a very local oil that we use a lot, and I use it a lot. Some vinegar, salt, and pepper, and some lemon juice. There we go. We mix it together. I'm going to serve my salad on some crisp bread. Wait just a second. Here we are. We eat that a lot in Sweden. We eat that for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and we eat, I always eat that in, in the mornings with cheese and ham and jam. It's very good. 
And then I just fix my salad on my twist bread. And then it's done. Finally, we just top it up with dill. And for myself, I'm going to make a big one. That's one of the advantages of being a chef. only one hour drive from Ystad, so I feel very much that this is my own home region. The land in the area is very fertile. That is why the region is so well set for producing good food. And the yellow rape is a local classic. We use it to produce rapeseed oil for cooking, and I just used some in my first dish today. The flat landscape is boring to some, but I love it. And the climate makes this part of Sweden a unique province. It is almost like a country of its own, very different from the rest of Scandinavia. Shot. A lot of real estate has been converted into golf courses in Skåne. There are so many golf courses around here that I lost count. While golf may be a very harmless family sport, Slug, yeah. this is just things you have to do to work up an appetite. <laughs> All the stones and they are a total of 59 large stones that form a ship setting which is the largest of its kind here in Sweden. <laughs> oh, I have to lie down just for a minute. <laughs> this was so amazing. This is where I'm going to do my main cooking today. Thanks guys for the flight. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That's nice. My first dish sea mussels with crushed tomatoes and some fresh tomatoes. So I start, I have my pot on the, on the stove and it's hot so that's good. The shallots, cut them just roughly. It's very important when you prepare sea mussels that they are clean. You just clean them under running water for 10 minutes. If there are any mussels that are broken, just throw those away. And also, if there are some mussels that are open, just tap them firmly on the edge of the bowl or your sink and if they don't close, throw those away as well. And these sea mussels, you can catch them around here in the ocean because we have such cold water. We have that almost all the time here in Sweden. <laughs> garlic. I just slice the garlic like this. I'm going to use some rosemary to my mussels. OK, 
Okay, so now we just saute the onion, the garlic and the rosemary. The fresh tomatoes goes into the pot. The blue mussels, of course. I say blue mussels, that's all in Sweden we call it blue mussels, but in English it's sea mussel. Sea mussel. My crushed tomatoes. Wine. Put the lid on and shake the pot from time to time and when the sea mussels are open, well, then they're ready. my main dish and that is corn-fed chicken. This is a typical chicken from the region and it's fed with corn. And you can see here that the fat is very yellow. That's the corn, it's very tasty. So I'm going to stuff my corn-fed chicken with sage and garlic like this. Two leaves under the skin, that's enough. One big. And this chicken is a little bit more expensive if you compare it to an ordinary chicken. The thing that they are fed with are more expensive, but I think it is well worth it. If you haven't tried, try it because it's very tasty. Garlic, just slice it thinly. Put that as well under the skin. Season it with salt and pepper. Put my corn fed chicken in my grilling pan. And I'm just going to grill it with the skin side down for around seven minutes. And then I turn it over and continue grilling the chicken for five minutes. To my corn fed chicken, I'm going to use this. This is fresh white cabbage. And I like this cabbage. It's very leafy and it isn't so hard and firm as the white cabbage. We half it. And then we just slice it. The chicken is almost ready. And the mussels. Let's take a quick check on the mussels. They are ready. So, we just pull them off the heat. Now I'm going to fry my cabbage, golden brown. One swirl of the pan with oil, or two, two. One lump of butter. And my chicken, a good trick to see if the chicken is done, you can just press down the end parts of the chicken, and if they are firm, the chicken is done. And also, you can press down in the middle of the chicken, and if it bounces back, the chicken is ready. My cabbage is golden brown, just as I want it. Tear off some parsley. There we go. Okay. My red onion, just going to finely slice it. You see, I have an audience. That's really nice. The apples. 
I remove the core. And then I slice it finely. The apples into the bowl with the cabbage and the red onion and the parsley. Radish. Then I'm also going to slice thinly. Here I have some sesame seeds, as you can see. You just roast them in a dry frying pan until golden brown. So, a lot of sesame seeds. And then finally, the rapeseed oil. Vinegar. Raisins. And then I just season it with salt and pepper. White pepper. Taste it. Okay, then it's time for a serving.